Today we're looking at the top 5 weakest starter Pokemon of all time, with Sceptile in our number 5 spot. Now before you crack out the pitchfork and flag this video for terrorism, let me explain what this list actually is. This is a list comprised of the starters with statistically the least number of advantages throughout a playthrough. Basically starters that provide the least help through the gyms, Elite 4, and other significant fights of a region. And while Sceptile is certainly not the worst starter you could ever pick, I'm actually a Sceptile stan. Um, if you look at it under a microscope or just play with it, you realize it's not the best. <laughs> Sceptile has 120 base speed with 105 special attack. So how could this thing be on this list? Well, the first and biggest issue with Sceptile is actually its moveset. Unlike most starter grass Pokemon, Trico learns Absorb, which is a 20 damage base power move. It's terrible, and it's stuck with it until level 29 where it gets Leaf Blade. Now, Leaf Leaf Blade is pretty good, but in Generation 3, which is the version of Sceptile we're looking at, it only does 70 base damage. In later gens, it was buffed up to 90 to match Surf and Flamethrower, but 70 is not quite enough. It's not bad, but as Sceptile's signature move, it's certainly lacking compared to the other two starters. But I think one of the biggest reasons it's on this list is specifically because of that early learn set. Like, even in the very first gym of the game, the Rock-type user Roxanne, you'd think you'd have this huge advantage against her, and you just don't when you pick Trico. You'd think with grass moves, this fight would be a clean sweep, but Nose Pass is tough. It's a pure rock type, and Absorb is just not strong enough to take it down. And unfortunately, this seems to be the case for much of the early to mid game. From here we go to the seemingly neutral Brawly with fighting types. Should be kind of a back and forth, but Absorb is terrible, and Grovile has really Really low defense. Like, it's meant to be a fast sweeper, but because you can't deal any damage, you just get wrecked. From here, you have Watson, who you're supposed to resist because he's an electric type user, but he's got Magnemite and Magneton, which also resist grass. Jim Forrest, Flannery, who you get devastated by. And then you have the normal type Norman, who, again, you'd think it might be a. a fairly okay fight. You might have Leaf Blade by this point, you do some decent damage, but then Grovile just gets two hit and you're done. And then from here it's Gym 6 with Winona's Flyers, so good luck in the entire start of the game. There is so much love for this line though, and I think it's because of its later game advantages. Tate and Liza's Psychics have Rock Typing, so Trico is actually quite useful here, and you obviously wreck Wallace and Wands Water Teams. So okay, it starts to come around in the late Game. It also does okay in the Elite Four. Sceptile goes pretty neutral to Sydney's Dark types, and the same can be said for Phoebe's Ghosts. You do get dunked on by Glacius Ice types, but Drake can be another story. If you're a really keen player, you can go out of your way to get Dragon Claw and teach it to Sceptile, and whew, it's nice for this fight. Drake does have some flyers, so you gotta watch out for it, but getting a nice Dragon Claw off with that beefy high special attack. Oh, it feels real good. In Gen 3, before the special physical split, Sceptile is very useful in this fight. But then it's surprisingly not useful in either champion fight. So it's unsurprisingly bad in Ruby and Sapphire against Steven. It can only take out Claydol and loses to Armaldo, Metagross, and Skarmory. But what always shocks me is how bad it does in the Emerald Water Champion fight. Waylord has Blizzard, Tentacruel has Sludge Bomb, Ludicolo is a Grass type, Gyarados is a flying type, and Milotic has Ice Beam. The only thing it can do in this fight is take out the Wish Cash. So while I love Sceptile, and I know a lot of you guys love Sceptile, there is no denying that it's just not that good. If you're still here, and you don't hate me, maybe consider subscribing. 1% of you are subscribed! Please, help us! Now, our number four spot is going to Superior, which again, um, please, hear me out. Black and white are pretty difficult games already, and this makes Superior feel bad to use. When you consider that Emboar gets dual typings and Samurott is just good with good matchups, Superior falls to the wayside. Also, it has an attack and special attack of 75. Like, sure, they're well-balanced, but well-balanced doesn't matter when they're both 
bad. <laughs> As for type matchups, well again, if you can believe it, Grass doesn't do so good. So the first gem of black and white is always super effective against whatever starter you pick, so it does perform no worse than Emboar or Samurott. It's also neutral to Lenore's normal types, but that's where the positives end. Berg's Whirlipede and Leveny easily win with both poison and bug type moves. And then it's like, oh, you've got an electric gem. Sick. What what's on the team? Oh, two Volt Switch Amolgas with Stab Aerial Ace? Yeah, okay. Now in fairness, it does at least help you against Clay's ground types with Mega Drain and Leaf Blade. But even in this very tough gym, you still have to watch out for Excadrill because it's Steel type. Now from here, this thing falls flat on its face. Superior is annihilated by Skyla's Flying Team, Bryce's Ice Mons, and Drayden or Iris's Dragons. It doesn't have an advantage over a single Pokemon of the last three gyms. And as for the Elite Four, it doesn't really fare any better. It can beat Ghost User Chantal's Jellyfish and Golurk, but you also gotta watch out for Chandelure. It's neutral against Grimsley and does well against Crocodile, but his Bisharp will take you out with Aerial Ace. It gets stomped on by Sigilyph and then goes neutral to Marshall's fighting types. So yeah, there is definitely some use through this Elite Four, but it's the champion fight where things get even worse. Who do we want to talk about? The real champion? Alder, my man's got Excelgore, Vanillux, Excavalier, and Volcarona. Uh, yeah, that's a hot no. How about N? We've got a Dragon type, a Steel type, an Ice type, a Flying type, and a Dark type that knows Flamethrower. Gets us on the other hand, you know what? Sure, you've got one advantage and I'll give it to you. You can take out the Seismitoad. Congratulations, Superior is really quite bad. <laughs> I will take a second to acknowledge that if you get the hidden ability contrary, this Pokemon can be really good, but through a normal playthrough of Gen 5, it's a really rough time. It's still though not as bad as our number three spot, which is Pikachu. Yeah, I think sometimes we forget that Pikachu was a starter, but all the way back in Gen 1 yellow, that's what you get. There's no choices, you're just stuck with the yellow mouse, and it's really not a fun time. I mean, as you can imagine, you really can't expect a lot from a Pokemon that's not allowed to evolve. Like even some of the worst starters third evolution crush Raichu's stats. But let's talk about how a playthrough of Pokemon yellow with Pikachu goes. So we start off this journey facing Brock with two ground type Pokemon. You just simply don't win this fight. To give credit where credit is due though, Pikachu does do well in the second gym. Having an early electric type makes Misty actually not too bad. From here we've got a stalemate against Surge, except he has Raichu and, and you don't. And then Erica pretty much wipes the floor with you. From here, it's neutral against Koga's Poisons and Sabrina's Psychics, but will likely be easily overpowered by Alakazam's Insane Snats. It's neutral to Blaine, and then Giovanni is immune to Electric besides his Persian, so he also wrecks you. The one redeeming thing about Pikachu in Pokemon Yellow is that it's actually quite useful against your rival. That's like four significant fights. He's pretty much always got a Water or a Flyer on his team, so there is one other use case throughout the main section of the game. Now moving into the Elite Four, Pikachu does do pretty well, destroying most of Lorelei's water types. And after that, it doesn't do very well against Bruno. It's pretty neutral to Agatha's poison team with one nice advantage over Golbat. And admittedly, it can take out Lance's Gyarados and potentially his Aerodactyl. So overall, Pikachu has pretty bad matchups, but when you combine that with pitiful stats, you get one of the worst starters to ever exist in the franchise. Now, on to number two, we have Chespin of Generation 6. Chespin starts out the game with a matchup against a bug type. Out the gates, it's not a fair fight for the guy, but it's the reality he faces when you choose him as your starter. This means you get to begin your journey facing a Vavillion with super effectiveness as you can only hit back for a quarter damage. But fear not, right? Because up next is the good old faithful early rock gym. You can always count on this to be a nice easy sweep for the grass starter, right? Well, sadly not in generation six because Game Freak really headed out for Chespin and decided to make the two Pokemon in this gym both have a resistance to grass. Her ace is part dragon, so you lose super effectiveness there, and her leading Pokemon is Amora, which is hilariously part ice type. Like I was saying, Trico's not the best in its rock gym. Chespin is just a whole nother story. Chespin is 
tragic in the early game. From here, things don't drastically improve with the third gym, which has the flying type Halucha. The fourth gym contains a Weepin' Bell that knows stab poison moves and a jump pluff with stab acrobatics. It's not until the fifth gym where you have any advantage. And this is an electric gym, so it's just a resistance and you still have to watch out for a Molga with Aerial Ace. And the best part about this is it gets even funnier from here. So you're going to be evolved by the time you get to the sixth gym. Chestnut's gonna gain the fighting type, and guess what this gym contains? We've got fairy Pokemon that know Psychic. The seventh gym gets even better, just Psychic type, and if that didn't make things worse, the final gym is Ice type. You literally couldn't write a worse matchup. And it doesn't even end there. The first Elite Four member is Fire. The second is Steel. You've got Steel Fairy and Steel Bug that both resist fighting. And then Aegislash is straight up immune with ghost typing. You want to know what's on the next fight? The next fight is Dragon mixed in with Poison and Flying. And so through the entire game, it's not until the final Elite Four member that you are given an advantage. Cybold has two water types that Chestnut can take out. A pure water type and a rock water. Unfortunately, you still can't sweep this gym as he's got a Starmie with Psychic and a Gyarados to resist your grass moves. And finally, if, if you really just are, are not convinced, <laughs> you get dusted by Halucha, Gudra, and Gardevoir. And then you've got Aurorus, one of the two Pokemon Chespin can hit in this fight for super effective damage, and it knows Blizzard. So let's hope you've been speed EV training because you only outspeed this thing by base five speed. Did I mention that Chespin is bad? And yet still, all of that is not enough to claim our number one spot. You begin your journey by facing off in the first gym against some flyers. From here, you know, maybe you're expecting to catch a break. Uh, unfortunately, the second gym is actually bug types where you once again get wrecked. Throughout the entire run, your rival is gonna be carrying a fire type, a flying type, and a poison type. And while you do go neutral to the third gym, it's notoriously hard and you're not prepared for it. The next gym is Ghost. You're thinking, great, I could probably take this on. Except the only Pokemon in this entire gym comes from the Ghastly family. Now at this point, you're really excited because the fifth gym has a water type on its team and you can actually take that out. On to gym number six, which is Steel type. Good luck. Now, gym number seven. Okay, maybe we finally found ourselves an advantage because I'm seeing some water types on this team. Oh, wait, what's that? You're telling me that this is actually an ice gym. Uh, no, that's fine, that's fine. Surely the Elite Four is gonna have some better matchups, right? We're gonna start things off with Will, who's got two flying types, an ice and a grass Pokemon. Granted though, he does have a Slowbro, so congratulations, you've just found your second advantage in the entire game. Don't get too comfortable though, because the next member is Koga, who specializes in poison types. If that wasn't enough for you, he's also got bugs and flyers. Bruno, on the other hand, does have an Onix. So congratulations, you can defeat an Onix. But surely, in these next two fights, you're gonna have a big advantage, right? Karen rocks an Umbreon, neutral. Vile Plume, weak. Gengar, weak. Murkrow, weak. How do fire type, what? Surely this Pokemon's gonna catch a break, right? No, sorry. The champion is actually Dragon. Oh wait, actually, did I say Dragon? Every single Pokemon on this team is flying type. Gyarados, neutral, Aerodactyl, weak, Charizard, weak, and three Dragonite, which four times resist you. And so for those many, many, many reasons, it's Chikorita that gets our number one spot.